Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel and um, a question I get asked from time to time and actually I had one question today uh, was the type of cable that we use to have um, the signal from an outdoor antenna come into our home. So of course in the case of an MLA30 loop for example the coaxial cable is already attached to it. But in the case of, you know, an outdoor wire antenna or any type of other types of antenna you might make yourself or even commercial antennas you might purchase, you have to bring that in your home in a way that it lowers or minimize the amount of noise. So we use a cable that looks somewhat like this. There are different, different types and different styles. A lot of uh, the, the one of the most popular probably RG58. Um, what it has is a center conductor, that's where the antenna actually connects, and there's a metal shielding uh, that is either uh, going to be grounded or depending on the antenna's uh, properties, uh, the metal shielding could be also on the other side of, a, of a, a, an, an antenna like a dipole, for example. So it depends on the type of antenna, but what you need to have is such a shielded cable because that shielding that you see here is preventing noise from reaching the center conductor here. And that means that while that cable goes through your home, even if there's noise in your home, the noise is not going to reach that center conductor and conditions are going to stay uh, quiet. And of course, there's quality cables in here. Some are more shielded than others and uh, so there are different types of cables often goes with the price paid also for uh, the type of uh, coaxial cable. Now, what type for shortwave? Honestly, like I said, RG58 is very popular because it's one of the lowest priced coaxial cable and it does a great job. Remember that below 30 megahertz, often there isn't much loss. So even at 50 or 75 feet of coax, you won't see much difference between different cables uh, most of the time. What you need to mostly look at is make sure that there's the least amount of mismatch possible. Typical radios are at 50 ohms input. If you can get a coax that is at 50 ohms, that would be best. Or the closest possible, you know, at 75 will still do the job on shortwave. There's, there's not going to be that much of a loss. Uh, on transmit, it's another story. Here, we're really, really, this video is talking about receive only, not transmit. And, um, of course, you know, there's some people that might be tempted in using, um, like, uh, you know, cable-type coaxial cables that, that could go sometimes as high as 300 ohms imp impedance. Now, that mismatch is really big, and that might start actually degrading your reception. But... Overall, you know what, um, even there's a little mismatch, 75 instead of 50, or, you know, the type of, of, uh, of coaxial cable that you use is not going to have too much of an impact on reception below 30 megahertz because the loss at those frequencies is very low, uh, once again, in reception. But this is how you would bring, if you can, a wire antenna, for example, into your radio uh, with, of course, at the end, the proper connectors to connect to the radio you're using. If you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.